Joseph, come to bed. It's Valentine's Day. I can't. People need to know the playability of these children's trading cards. What if I wear the Dark Claw costume? I'll be right there. Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. It's Valentine's Day, and as Yugists, we often don't have too much to celebrate. When will Hallmark get with the program and start hosting holidays for people whose romantic interests begin and end with dark magician girl Oricas? Well, let's party in our own special way by celebrating a recent card market series winner and a match made in heaven, Invoked Shadow. So here's the list, and it's imperative you're playing the alt arts. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is a one-stop shop for deck building, deck uploading, card searching, and strategy articles, some of which are written by yours truly. I'm proud to represent them, and I encourage any player interested in deck building to check out their website at www.ygoprodeck.com. Now let's fiddle with fusion. Invoked the ever-splashable occultists and Raid Shadow Legends, the recently resurrected structure deck superstars, just took first place in the card market series in a shockingly one-sided final against Salamangrate. This list, piloted by Kevin Semlani, or Neftis, is the strongest argument against rotation I have yet heard, considering his deck is about three mathematicians short of a build you might see in 2014. This anti-meta monstrosity is able to cleave through a field of Spiral and Friends with ease, with consistent access to Winda, and a shockingly competent board-building ability, even in an archetype designed to profit from its opponent's hand traps and extra deck monsters. Despite an extremely favorable metagame, some of you still may remain unconvinced of the board-busting power of a deck that was good so long ago that a child born after Construct was banned is now old enough to make $10 million on an Instagram endorsement for Mike Bloomberg. Well, to those who have suffered 18 consecutive formats of yu tubers claiming the return of Construct's posse, trust me when I say, this time is different. The Shadows are on a whole other level with the release of Link Monsters, Construct becomes an omni-searcher when you can voluntarily send her away, and Cross Sheep enables lines Gristia couldn't have imagined in her wildest dreams. This deck is well-positioned, recursive, explosive, and worth considering for any wayward boomer. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, our dolls. In ratios, I'll freely admit I'm too young to understand. 3 Hedgehog, 2 Beast, 2 Dragon, 2 Squamata, and a Falco. Next are our Perform Ages, that's right, the Prodigal Pepists have returned, 3 Damage Juggler, 1 Hat Tricker, and 1 Trick Clown. After that are 3 A-Lister and a package of Psy Frame Gear Gamma. For spells, we're on 3 Shadal Fusion, 3 L Shadal Fusion, 3 Invocation, 3 Meltdown, a Terraforming, a Set Rotation, a very fun and interactive card, and a Foolish Burial. The list rounds out with three called and a core. In the extra, we're on invoked monsters of Double Macaba, Purgatrio, and Caliga, followed by a Shadal suite of three Construct and two Winda. For Lynx, we're playing Boral Sword, Opelousa, Phoenix, Alistair, two Cross Sheep, and Almirage. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against a Zombie. This hand might look like a brick, but don't worry, it's about to get a lot better as our opponent does a lot of the work for us. They're going to lead with a copy of Terraforming, which gets a copy of Zombie World to hand. They'll activate Zombie World, set a card, and then fire off the Mothman. They hit the Mothman, allowing us to discard a dragon and send that Zombie World to the graveyard where it belongs. Next, they're going to special summon a copy of Jack of Ruin and pass. From here, we should be able to easily win. We'll normal summon a copy of Alistair to get an Invocation. We'll fire the Invocation. Our opponent will chain a copy of Jack of Ruin, but I will relish any opportunity to banish that Mizuki. We'll go to Construct, and then then go ahead and draw off of Beast and send off of Construct, sending a Squamata, which will send a Beast and destroy the remaining set spell and trap. We found a Terraforming, so we'll go ahead and activate Magical Meltdown, get fodder for next turn, and go to Battle Phase. We'll banish that Mizuki and get in for 2800, passing it back to our opponent and allowing the Buren to come back. They'll draw a copy of Ash Blossom a little too late before going to Battle Phase and attacking into one of our two A-listers. For turn, we're going to draw a copy of Shadal Falco. We'll activate the Perform Age Damage Juggler in the graveyard, and oh, honey, that's what you'll ash? I'm afraid this game is over. While our deck excels at both meta and meta-adjacent matchups, it struggles somewhat against decks that operate on a different axis of interaction. Case in point, our opponent for Game 2 is playing Generator. This deck doesn't need to summon a whole bunch of times in one turn, nor does it need to activate very many monster effects. As a result, we may find it difficult to clinch out the win. They're going first, they're going to set two cards and activate Generator's stage, and our Gamma is looking extremely silly right about now. Well, we still might be able to do it, provided we can prompt the Lopter before we have any monsters on our side of the board. We're going to fire off this copy of Terraforming, 
blink ASAP, and thankfully our opponent does blink. They'll go for the Lopter, allowing us to activate Gamma, but shoot, they have a boss fight set. Okay, well, at least it's not a room. We're going to negate and destroy this effect of Lopter, but unfortunately, after resolution, the effect of Generator Stage will trigger, and a Hoar will make it onto our opponent's side of the board. We'll go for Phoenix, they will Hoar negating it, meaning that set card is extremely important, but we probably will be able to activate something over the course of the turn. As suspected, it's a solemn judgment for a magical meltdown, though that does allow us to go for a Shadow Fusion, getting ourselves a copy of Construct. We're going to send a copy of Dragon to the graveyard to get rid of that stage, only one left in the deck, and they're going to Hoar a card from our hand, which I'm not too beat up about, as I get to eat said Hoar afterwards. We're going to set a Falco and pass it back to our opponent. For turn, our opponent draws a Hala and then activates Generator Stage. This is why you play a one of Dobblegus, folks. They're going to go into a Lopter and summon a whole bunch of tokens in the process. We drew a Fusion, and man, I wish they would just go into the extra deck. Okay, well, we can at the very least do something after they resolve the effect of Mardell to get a copy of Quest to hand. We'll flip up this copy of Falco to get a copy of Hedgehog Set, activate Should All Fusion the hard way so we can trigger both the effect of Construct and the effect of the monster we just sent, as well as the Construct on our side of the field. We'll go ahead and send a Another copy of Dragon to destroy the final copy of Generator Stage, walk over this Lopter, and pass it back to our opponent. With just a Mardell, there's not a whole lot they're going to be able to do. Unfortunately, after they called by the grave our copy of Construct, they will add a boss fight to hand. Ah, one left. Okay, well that allows them to activate a stage from Graveyard, so it's going to be a problem. We'll normal summon a copy of A-Lister the Invoker, they'll activate Boss Fight. Uh, that allows them, after resolution, to special summon a Lopter from deck. They'll then special summon a bunch of tokens as well, but we should be able to get this one. We'll go into a copy of Cloth Heap. They're going to go into a copy of Utgarda, so they can potentially banish a monster on our side of the field, and unfortunately we don't get to activate the effect of Construct because it's undercalled. We're going to flip up Squamata to try and destroy the Utgarda. It's successful, so now we can go into Invoked Purgatrio, and that should be the end of the game. Remember, this monster not only has piercing, but will be up to 4,100 attack points. We'll get in over every individual monster and win the game. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Of course, there's really only one game in town right now, so our opponent is on Spiral. Unfortunately for them, we've not only won the die roll, but also will be breaking from a rich tradition of invoked gameplay and are going first. Let me show you what this deck can do. We're going to lead with a copy of Terraforming to get a copy of Magical Meltdown to our hand. Afterwards, we're going to activate the Magical Meltdown for an A-Lister, normal summon the A-Lister, add an Invocation to hand, and pop off. We'll go into an Almirage, firing the Invocation to get a copy of Macabre to our side of the field, and adding the A-Lister back to hand, before activating the Grave Effect of Damage Juggler, special summoning a Hat Trigger going into Invoker of Madness, and El Shadal Fusion for a Winda, activating the effect of Hedgehog and passing to our opponent. Make your one special summon count! They're going to go for Foolish Burial Goods, then special this copy of Master Plan. We'll activate Macabre in response, and they'll concede! So as you can see, this deck's dingus of choice is extremely efficient versus the top archetype in the meta. Of course, you can't always guarantee you win the die roll. What happens when you have to play from the back foot? Let's see what our opponent can do going first. They're going to lead with a copy of Foolish Burial Goods, sending a rescue, and then specialing a Magician Souls. Ah, <sighs> that's full combo. They're going to bring back this copy of Spiral Master Plan, and then special summon the Souls, activating Plan to get a copy of, you guessed it, Rescue Number 2. They'll activate Resort to get a Quick Fix, and Quick Fix to get a Big Red before going into a Link Rebo, Big Redding back the Quick Fix, and then activating the Quick Fix effect to get a copy of Drone. They'll Jackalope, ooh, and they discard the Drone. Oh, we might be able to do something with this. They'll Blocker, discarding the Rescue and bringing back the Drone, and never mind. Next, they're going to go into Opelousa. Oh boy, and the Gamma's off. Until I remember, Opelousa doesn't destroy, and Gamma isn't once per turn. Let's start firing Gamma and getting those Appaloosa activations out of the way. We'll fire it on this quick fix, and it'll be negated. They're going to rescue back this copy of Master Plan and activate Master Plan, which we will Gamma, and they will Appaloosa. And with one Appaloosa remaining, I'm actually feeling pretty confident. They're going to go for the Sneck. They hit it, discarding a copy of Last Resort, and meaning that they're likely not going to have access to Sleeper. They're going to activate the effect of Drone and Graveyard to get a material back from their graveyard to their hand, and then they'll special summon it, going into a Phoenix. This is excellent news for me, because it means I'll be able to activate Set Rotation, and my opponent won't be able to Trigate without running into Gamma. We'll fire Set Rotation and activate Mystic Mine! Fun game! So, our opponent still has monsters on their side of the field, and I'm afeard that any of those set cards could easily be Utility Wire and lock me out of the game, so at some point I'm going to have to start playing. They're going to keep setting cards and passing back to me, and I figure, well, let's start destroying those set things. We're going to leave with a copy of Shadal Hedgehog, that's going to add a copy of Shadal Fusion, which we'll activate to get a Construct. We'll activate both Dragon's Effect and Construct's Effect as well. They'll activate Called by the Grave, and shoot, ah, uh, Recurring Dragons was really my A-strat here. Okay, well, we'll banish this copy of Perform Age Damage Juggler for a Hat Trigger, so we can go into A-Lister, then activate 
activate Construct's effect, prompting a second called by the Grave. Shoot! Are all these set cards called? We're gonna go to Damage Juggler again and make Boral Sword, and you might have noticed this Phoenix is still on board, and this Zero Attack Appaloosa is still co-linked. My opponent will upstart Goblin before Link summoning a Boral Sword of their own, but they can't OTK here, and uh-oh, bad news for them, they're on the receiving end of a Boral Sword of ours. Well, we're going to activate Damage Juggler's effect so we can special summon a copy of Trick Clown before we attack into this copy of Boral Sword Dragon. They're going to Boral Sword to switch our monster to defense, so we can't, but we still have another remaining monster, the Shadal Core we have set, which we can switch to defense and attack for lethal. So we're back with the deck, and wow. I mean, it's not often I get to hype up an archetype just for it to, you know, actually perform. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. Say it with me, viewers. One, it's consistent. Obviously, any deck playing Invoked is going to have a trivial time finding its first turn plays, but I'm surprised at how easy Winda setups seem to be, even for a deck that's often forced to go first. Two, it lines up extremely well against the metagame. Almost every strategy worth its salt needs to special summon several times in one turn, and certainly none of them can play under Kaliga. And three, Upon recognizing the superiority of these Boomerian Bunguses, you are immediately awarded a lifetime supply of Monster Energy White version, a Riding Lawnmower, and a wife to performatively hate. And the cons. One, it's not very decent at dealing with Droll. I mean, that's a card that nearly every deck is sneaking into the main board, so seeing it every game is going to suck. Two, there are boards it can't break. They're few and far between, but against decks like Spiral, you'll likely have to do your best to avoid getting savaged by Sleeper. And three, it's a deck that's not for everyone. Some people just can't get used to a life of beating admirers off with a stick. Trust me, I understand. All in all, if you stumbled upon this video looking for ways to upgrade your Shadal Core, uh, the archetype, not the trap, you might have just found it. So that's that. Thanks to my patrons, Protagify, Tyler Slacks, Mika Reichman, Crispy, Sir Tachyon, Emperor Stove, TJ Steakhouse, Pro Yugi Dad, Picnic Blastit, Burrito Man 93, Fighting Fang Wong, Donnie Fillerup, Meat Moto 27, Adam Sundquist, Isaac Jackson, Second, Lucas Geardis, Adam Trevino, Adrian Broad, Distrin, and others. If you like my videos, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.